often people will assume that I'm either Shane's like sister or mom. When I do say, no, this is my wife, mm -hmm. people's jaws hit the floor. We definitely get a lot of comments from straight men thinking it's not fair that I'm with Shane and that I should be with them. They perceive that I can't have sex in their very limited missionary yeah. man fucks woman. Like, they think that is the yeah. be all end all of sex. Which they'll describe to me oh, in great detail. In vivid detail wow. yeah. about how they would do it and how I am not capable of that. Little do they know. Oh my gosh. This episode of What's Underneath Couples is made possible with the support of Relish, an app that helps couples communicate better and feel closer than ever. And Dipsy, an app where storytelling meets sexual wellness so that you can find more confidence and joy in and out of the bedroom. Can each of you talk about how you first met? We met almost six years ago. I was a freshman in college. I was up really late one night studying for finals and I saw a documentary that one of my favorite actors made about Shane. I think it linked to his blog. I had a popular blog at the time. Yeah. Called Laughing at My Nightmare. And I felt like we had a lot in common. Mm -hmm. And I reached out to him <laughs> through email, which is a weird thing for me to do. It's so... Out of character. Out of character for Hannah. Yeah. Who was a very shy, yeah. reserved... I had never emailed a stranger before. Because of kind of my blog, which was bigger at the time, I got a lot of emails from strangers, and almost every email I received told me that I was an inspiration, and not in a good way. Hannah's email didn't reference my disability at all. She complimented my humor and what we had in common. She used parentheses in her email in a way that, like, just did it for me. So I responded. I gave her my number. We just began texting. Because I slightly also didn't believe she was real because she was beautiful. And the most beautiful person I'd ever seen. And it felt like that combined with the humor and the intelligence, like, was too good to be true. Yeah. And the day after the email, um, I was like, do you want to FaceTime? And she was like, no, I don't want to. And I was like, all right, what if it is only one second long. And so she was like, fine. So I called and I was like, hello. And then I hung up. I don't even know if I said hello. Yeah, I, mean, I think yeah, I'm understanding. Yeah. <laughs> we did our one second FaceTime and then I went to an exam. Yeah. And then when we got back, I was packing to go home for spring break. And we FaceTimed while I packed up. It was remarkable how quickly we felt extremely comfortable mm -hmm. with each other. Can you talk about assumptions that people make about both of you? Often people will assume that I'm either Shane's like sister or mom. Or just like general helper. Caregiver helper. Yeah. When I do say, no, this is my wife, mm -hmm. people's jaws at the floor. Yeah. And they say, oh, wow, good for you. Or to her, they're like, oh, hon. <laughs> One time, the woman who uh, asked if I was Shane's cousin. Yeah. And he said, no, this is my girlfriend. And she like came up to me and took my hands and began to cry and was like, that, you, that's the most beautiful thing I've ever heard. Like you're an angel, which was super uncomfortable because that insinuates that I'm an angel because Shane is a terrible choice. Yeah. And, and you're like, you're I'm remarkable for choosing yeah. that. Like we went to a beer store and Shane ordered beer and like bought it, paid for it. And then the man asked me if he wanted a lollipop. Like just like bizarre things like that will happen. And I'm like, you just sold him beer and like conversed with him. Like, why do you think this is a child now? I have a mustache. And how does that make you feel, each of you? Like shit. There's a huge assumption that people who have disabilities like mine don't have any value, don't have any quality of life and would not be worthy partners. I developed a very thick skin early on. I think that's kind of where my sense of humor and my sarcasm were born from. Because otherwise I'd be upset every day. Hannah, her natural response to it 
is also to like laugh about it yeah. and make fun of the situation. And that I think really helps us because if if my partner was someone who got very upset yeah. by those types of things, it wouldn't work. But then we'll have comments online that are just like horrible. Yeah. And Shane does not, like those don't bother him. Online comments, like his, his skin is very thick with those, uh -huh. but they bother me a lot. In general, it's just like thinking we're fake, that we're lying, that like there's no possible way we could actually be a couple. Another very common angle that people take is that we are a real couple, but Hannah must be deeply damaged mm. in some way yeah. to, to want to be with a disabled man. People will often ask me, like, how if my friends or family expressed anything negative when I started dating Shane. My friends and family like never yeah. ever expressed anything negative. And I don't know if it's because they just like didn't think anything negative or if it's because they knew that even if they did, I would never have like given into that. Can you each talk about kind of like where you were at in your lives when you connected specifically maybe related to like dating history? I had like interests at college and crushes in high school, whatever, but I had never had like a, a serious boyfriend. And I hadn't met anybody that I really wanted to spend that much time with. Like even friends, I would need a break from them after like three days, you know, I'd be like, I need my, my private time. Like I need to be alone. I need silence. I had no interest from girls growing up. I had to develop this understanding that I wasn't done on a date. I was a burden, and I would even see it like in my friend groups. Like I would ask the same person for help at lunch too many times, and I could tell that they were annoyed. There became a direct connection between needing help with things and people pushing away in college. I ended up having a few relationships. There was a common theme of parents or family members of my partners flat out telling them, like, this is unhealthy for you. He's going to be a burden on you forever. That was always kind of the, the beginning of the end. <laughs> I think that was generally at a pretty low point in my life. I was 23. Three. Yeah. I was ready from college. My friends were all moving off to big cities, getting married, and I was living with my parents still. Early on in our relationship, I was telling him I need help with pretty much every aspect of daily life, you know, other than like using my phone, using my laptop, driving my chair. And she was super expressive saying like, I want you to be comfortable with me. I want us to be able to like, be alone together. So if I need to help you pee during that time, then I want to learn that. Shane asked me a million times, like, are you sure you're going to be fine with this? And eventually I was like, I've already told you like 10 times that I'm fine with it. Like I started to get annoyed. I was like, are you not listening to me? Like, do you not believe me? Like I'm confused. I manage my wants and needs against how I'm perceiving other people are feeling. I would be home alone all day, like in college, when my parents would get home from work, I would perceive that it was slightly annoying for them to get home after a long day and then have to help me go to the bathroom. So I would just wait when they got home. Like I would just hold it. I did that with Hannah in the beginning. I think at the beginning I was like, oh my God, am I gonna like all of a sudden be hit with like this feeling of, of shame being a burden? Like, is this a thing? Is it gonna happen to me? And it's never happened to me. Yeah. And I think because we we talk to each other very openly about like our feelings about, yeah. are, you, are you good to help me like shower tomorrow morning? And like, what time do you wanna sleep in till? Like we just talk a lot about like what each of us wants and uh -huh. compromising on like our, our schedules mm -hmm. and we just keep it very open. Like yeah. here and there, like if she's having a bad day or a bad moment, I will be more careful, but not in a way that feels like 
bad or unhealthy for me. Yeah, it's, now it's more just like regular marital. Uh -huh. Like if we're in a fight, <laughs> it's maybe not the best time to be like, can you get me a beer? Another insecurity that we faced kind of in the middle of our relationship, I was very nervous about Hannah being at college, me being in Pennsylvania and her being a thousand miles away at college, going to swim parties. I felt like a cliche, like the jealous disabled guy who can't be there and is worried that his mega hot girlfriend is going to find a better mega hot guy. <laughs> It's okay. a very specific so, cliche. But there was this one moment in our relationship where I had this friend. It was only ever friendship between us. But Hannah got jealous having Hannah react that way of being like worried that I was interested in this other person made me realize that Hannah was serious. What is your biggest insecurity or struggle within the relationship? When I met Shane's family, I am shy. I don't really like to talk to strangers. I remember we had a family party on like my first or second visit where I met all of Shane's extended family. And afterwards he was annoyed because I, he felt that I didn't want to meet them, like didn't care, didn't put in the effort to get to know them. And I was like so pleased with myself for surviving this party. I was like, you know, I smiled and nodded, like I did it, and then Shane was upset. I initially thought that that was like a choice that she was making. Yeah, like I didn't want to talk to them. Yeah. I didn't care enough. Over the years, I've learned that that's just Hannah. I think doing our YouTube channel made a big difference. And just like talking to a camera, which isn't as scary as talking to a person. Do you mind talking a little bit about like sexuality and sex like within the relationship and like when did that start and like how was that for you at the beginning? Our intimacy benefits from my disability. A big thing for me is that our intimacy is not just me enjoying it. And I think that relates to my burden complex. I, the things that people say oh, yeah. that like I couldn't possibly be satisfied. Like we get uh -huh. that comment every day. It doesn't look like what you see in the movies, maybe. Um, but like I can totally do it. I am kind of the more often than not the initiator. In general, Shane just uses his voice in ways that other people might just physically do something. A non-disabled man might come up to Hannah and start rubbing her shoulders. I will just say hey, do you want to go have sex? And I know that that like, probably strikes people as like, oh, that must be not romantic. Yeah. But like, take our word for it. We, yeah. I, after I asked that, we were romantic. When we're in bed together, I can say like, hey, can you roll me towards you? Or like, can you move my arm so that I can reach your neck or like, Cheat. And we have like oh, yeah. shorthand for all of these things. Like you're not saying, can you please put your legs up under my legs? Yeah. Like we just know. Like I feel like I know his body and like preferences mm -hmm. as well as I know my own. Layer. So what what would be most comfortable to, for you to do the shirt? Burn? Probably the yeah. cardigan. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right, so what's gonna happen is I have to take my straps off. Okay. And then I'll take it off and then put the straps back on. Okay. So. Take your time and don't worry about it. At all. Yeah. Don't okay. worry at all. So when do you feel the most vulnerable with the other? I have like this <laughs> intense fear that goes back to like childhood of being left in my bed and like being stranded and dying. It developed from like this stupid moment in my childhood when my parents were having a drink on the front porch together. They had a baby monitor and it died while they were on the front porch. I yelled for them and they didn't hear me and I thought the worst been murdered and I was gonna die in bed. 
So, I've never gotten yeah, over that, and I don't like laying down in bed and not be within earshot of Hannah. If Hannah will put me in bed and then like say, oh, I have to like let the dog out, I will often be like, can you put me back in my chair? Like, I don't want to mm. stay laying down. Yeah. yeah. Or we'll like call and be on speakerphone. Oh, you'll call while you're taking the dog. Uh-huh. Yeah. Exactly, so we'll both have a phone. <laughs> we'll be like, okay, That's I'm at the door. Oh, so sweet. <laughs> I think I feel most vulnerable when I'm, like, expressing vulnerable emotions. Like, crying in front of him, being upset, feels vulnerable to me. Like, if I'm upset, I would rather just be alone mm -hmm. than like having to deal with someone else's like reactions to it. And that's why when she does, I'm like, whoa. Uh oh. And it yeah. really upsets me. Because mm -hmm. like I am a problem solver. Like yeah. that's how I handle any anything negative happening to Hannah is I'm like, how what can I do to fix it? Yeah. And that's not always helpful. I've learned that mm -hmm. lesson over the We've years. had a lot of talks about that. <laughs> yeah. You know? Like this isn't a moment where I'm asking for advice. Okay, so why don't you do like Shane's ring, and then you do all your jewelry. When do you each feel the sexiest to the other? I think for me, it's honestly like in our bedroom. Uh -huh. It's not like when I'm super dressed up, you know, going to an event. It's uh -huh. like when we're naked. <laughs> naked. Yeah, that's mine too. Yeah. When do you find the other to be the most beautiful? I think I find Shane most beautiful when he's doing something that he loves to be doing, whether that's like giving a presentation and I'm like watching. It's not so much like what you're wearing. You're usually in a button up, which I love, but you know, it's, it's more just like the general, like how he loves what he does. Hannah occasionally will put her hair up in like a messy bun type deal. And it is the most beautiful thing. <laughs> and then how well, my favorite outfit that she wears is like this loose tank top thing that she throws on like when she's getting out of bed. It's pajamas. And it's pajamas. It's a loose tank top, like no bra, sweatpants, and her hair up in a bun. I think that's so cute. Beautiful. What quality do you love the most about the other? The thing that I love most about Shane, he is just very selfless. He cares more about other people than himself. For Hannah, it is her passionate conviction for truth and like goodness. She is like pure goodness. And if other people don't live up to that or at least aspire to be that, she cannot accept that. So pants, I think. Pants? Yeah. Oh boy. Are we we're turning it this we're turning yeah. it to that. Yeah. Help me in the side of the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> What's your biggest fear with regards to the relationship or each other? Probably the other person dying. I feel yeah. like for both of us, that would be the Absolutely. biggest fear. Yeah. yeah. We both said, like, if one of us died, the other one would end it. Just like, I know. Uh, yeah, that's, that's a terrible a, thing to that's say. That's a horrible thing to say, but like... Mm -hmm. But it does feel like it, that. It feels like that, you know, that we just feel so lost. Yeah. yeah. Before I started treatment for the condition that I was born with, I didn't know what my future would look like because it is a progressive disease. And then the treatment came about. I remember calling Hannah and telling her, about the news. I remember just like crying yeah. on the phone with her. That was one of your first times. That was a tiny cry. Yes, that, prob that was one of the, the first times I cried probably. Yeah. That was like happy tears. I remember Shane had like some reservations about doing it. He had at, by that point kind of come to terms with his disability and like 
had pride in who he was and was just like happier with himself. I didn't want it to be about like fixing myself because I didn't feel broken. Why in your partnership? Why is it a good place to be? The best part about our partnership is the comfort that we have with each other. I cannot overstate how like little space I need from Shane. Like that's just so weird to me. I know that our life is and will continue to be hilarious and fun and full of adventure. I feel for the first time in my life like I'm not a burden because Hannah is wholly there for me and doesn't feel burdened by me. So, yeah. yeah. That is beautiful. Don't you do this more often? <laughs> <laughs> I need to start yeah. again. I feel good. Good. Yeah. I teared up there at the end of the I know. Yeah. Oh, it teared up. I love that. Yeah. Me too. Me too. Thank you to our partners, Dipsy and Relish, for sponsoring this episode of our What's Underneath Couple series. As women and people with vaginas, you've probably been taught a few things about sex that aren't serving you. Looking back at my early 20s, there were so many of my early sexual experiences where I was putting my partner's needs above my own and where my partner was pressuring me and I didn't have the self-worth or the knowledge of how to say no. Dipsy, the app where storytelling meets sexual wellness, stands alongside us in prioritizing our pleasure and becoming more in touch with ourselves and our bodies. All 500 plus Dipsy stories are consensual, feminist, sex positive, original productions. Relish is an app that helps couples communicate better and feel closer than ever. I've been married for 36 years and as the time goes by, it becomes more clear to me how much you have to work on your relationship in order to keep it healthy and connected. Relish provides a supportive space for couples to open up, build healthy relationship rituals, and develop life-changing communication skills. The daily rituals and prompts on Relish have helped me a lot in identifying the areas where I feel gratitude in my relationship and then have also helped me to express conflicts in a better way than I was doing before I was using the app. If you're interested in trying Relish, you can get a seven-day free trial at hellorelish.com slash underneath. Try a 30-day free trial for Dipsy when you subscribe with code STYLE like you today. Thank you for tuning into this week's episode of What's Underneath with Shane and Hannah. For more interviews like these, subscribe to STYLE like you. And don't forget to click the bell so that you're reminded of when we drop a new episode on Thursdays.